So for years now, many have been upgrading their Core 2 Duos and Quads to Xeon CPUs. This mod involves modifying the motherboard socket to accept the CPU, applying an overlay to the CPU itself, not to mention you have to sometimes actually modify the BIOS as well to add support for the Xeon. But is it all worth it? Uh, do the Xeon CPUs offer higher performance? Well, that's what I wanted to find out. So what I have here is a Xeon X5460, which I'll be comparing against a Q9550 Core 2 Quad. As you can see, they are very similar processors. Both were released within a few months of each other, have the same amount of cash, and operate at the same bus speed. However, the Xeon has a higher TDP and sold for nearly twice as much as the Quad. The Xeon also has a higher multiplier, so its final speed is about 300 megahertz higher. What's also interesting is, according to Intel, these two CPUs have the exact same die size and amount of die transistors, so they seem to be very similar, if not nearly identical. I asked in a poll if I should drop the Xeon's multiplier when testing so that they'd you know, be at the same speed, and as you can see, the results are pretty close. I found out, however, that dropping the multiplier, well, that wouldn't have made a very interesting video, because, uh, yeah, they're exactly the same. L let me show you really quick how they compared running at the same speed, and then I'll bump the multiplier back up and we'll see how they you know compare at stock settings so with the xeon's multiplier drop down to 8.5 to match the quads we have identical final speeds in pass mark the xeon performs slightly better in both the cpu and memory tests but in 7-zip they performed exactly the same and finished in the same amount of time cinebench was the same story but this time with the quad finishing a few seconds sooner and Handbrake both finished pretty much at the same time, with the Xeon finishing about two seconds sooner. Now remember, these tests are running on Windows 10, and since Windows has severe ADD with tons of background processes, a few second difference in either direction really means nothing. As you'll see later in the graphs, all things tested with this setup led to the two finishing and scoring almost the same. So let's go back and raise the multiplier of the Xeon back to its stock setting of 9.5 and see how it does against the quad. I mean, it's basically the same chip but clocked faster, so it should perform at least a little bit better. First up, as usual, pass mark. Well, the Xeon scored about 330 total points higher in the CPU test and about 44 final points higher in the memory test. In 7-zip, the Xeon, again, was faster, but not by much, finishing only about 7 seconds sooner. So they were nearly the same. In the single-threaded Cinebench run, the Xeon finished about 3 minutes sooner, so not a huge difference, but enough. With the multi-threaded run, things were even closer, with the Xeon finishing less than a minute before the quad. Converting a 10-minute H.264 1080 video in Handbrake, the higher clock Xeon was able to do it about 2 FPS faster and nearly 3 minutes sooner. Now, as I said before, you'd be a fool to try and mine with, with, these older, with any of these older processors. However, if you did... The slightly higher clock Xeon obviously was able to hold a higher average hash rate of about 100 more hashes per second. With Heaven, the Xeon scored higher and held an average frame rate about 20 FPS higher than the quad. In superposition, it was more of the same. The higher clock Xeon pulled ahead slightly with about a 2 FPS average lead. With Unreal Tournament 3, more of the same, the Xeon being slightly faster. One thing I did notice though is that even though the Xeon has a supposed TDP 25 watts higher than the quad, throughout all the tests, the temperatures of both CPUs stayed about the same. All right, so I'm gonna cut to the chase. They're basically the same CPU with one being clocked slightly higher. Here, look at Y Cruncher. Both the quad and the underclock Xeon performed exactly the same. Once the multiplier was reset and we were back to stock speeds, the Xeon pulled ahead slightly. If I was able to, I'd up the quad to 9.5X as well, but the multiplier is locked, so I can't do that. But looking at the graphs, you can see the same thing fell true for all the apps and games. The slightly higher clock Xeon scored slightly better. So what's the point of a Xeon? Well, it depends on the generation, but generally a Xeon can be used in multi-socket boards for multiple CPUs. Uh, they have the ability to use ECC RAM, and in some generations, they can even have high additional cores or higher maximum memory. However, with this generation, with the exception of the ECC RAM and being able to run multiple CPUs, they appear to be just the same as the desktop variant. So this mod is pointless, right? Well, not necessarily. As you can see here, you can get a used Xeon X5492 far cheaper than the equivalent Core 2 Quad Extreme. Matter of fact, you could buy two of them for about half the price of one Extreme. Now, if there's something I missed, I'm sure someone out there will be more than happy to point it out and add it in the comments. Either it would be something I didn't know or forgot to mention. Either way, go for it. But from what I can tell, at least for this generation, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference between the two, at least when used on a Socket 775 board. If you're interested in seeing all 
all of the benchmarks, let me know. I can throw together a video with all of them in it or even a video showing three at a time. It's up to you. Hope this wasn't too much of a disappointment. I have a few more videos possibly planned for Xeons coming up, so keep an eye out and I'll see you next time.